Hi, this is Tom Sinclair, your chief idiot with Streaming Idiots, and uh, today we're going to be previewing the uh, the beta from VMix, VMix 14. So hang around, we'll be right back. Hey, I'm Tom Sinclair, your your chief idiot today, and uh, bringing you a, what I hope will be an interesting episode of our Streaming Idiot Show. We are um, we're we're producing this show in VMix 14, the the latest beta. You know, living dangerously with that latest beta, and uh, we are exporting the video to Wirecast. And Wirecast is in turn uh, uh, broadcasting that to uh, Decast, D-A-C-A-S-T, Decast.com or CDN. And uh, Wirecast is also recording it. We are doing um, uh, 720p in vMix, 720p recording and broadcasting in Wirecast. So it's kind of an interesting, uh, interesting experiment. CPU usage is going between... 29 and 36 percent, so that's pretty good. A lot of headroom there, and um, still learning. Still, frankly, got to tell you folks, you know, still learning VMix, still learning Wirecast. I'm a VidBlaster guy to start with. Hope you'll tune into our that VidBlaster guy show uh, that's on Wednesday afternoons at three o'clock Eastern, eight o'clock in London, and also available on YouTube. Uh, it's that VidBlaster guy on YouTube. And we also take our Streaming Idiot show and post those onto, for now, onto our YouTube channel for That Vid Blaster Guy. So you can find the Streaming Idiots on That Vid Blaster Guy at YouTube. And uh, let's see, what other kind of disclosures do we need to do before we get it, get going here? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm actually an authorized vMix reseller. So if you're interested in vMix and would like to purchase it, I can, be, I can help you with that. If you're interested in going beyond that and getting a custom-built PC with vMix on it, or VidBlaster for that matter, um, I can help you with, with all that. We've, we've had a number of very, very successful um, PC builds, including uh, some really screaming fast six-core um, CPUs from Intel, which were a lot of fun to build. And uh, it's, been, it's been great to have customers all over the country that uh, can call us and say, Tom, we need some help. And uh, they've got my cell phone number. So if you're my customer, you've got my cell phone number. It's, I, oh, by the way, John, have you got my cell phone number? You need it. I'll send it to you. Anyway, today's show is going to be about vMix. And so what I want to do is, is really quickly give you, show you what my desktop looks like. So let me pop that up on the screen here. And this is my desktop. This is me in the top left-hand corner. I'm in the preview window. Over to my right, actually not my left, but your right, is the, the program window with the green screen across, with the green strip across the top of it. And, um, and of course, it's going to infinity because that's the program out that you see. And then right below me are uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven different inputs of different types. And then over to, uh, to your right down below, um, that's the audio side of the page. So audio on the right side and uh, video and images and other kinds of audio on the left side. Um, you can see uh, down the, the, the very left side of the page right over here, um, some, some colored boxes. And basically you can assign those, in, those each one of those boxes represents a level um, and, and, and basically a, a visual level. Right now we're at the level all where everything can be seen, but if I click on the orange button, if I had something, well, let's see, let's assign something to, to orange. We're gonna take this, um, take this opening right here and we're gonna assign it to orange. And so when we go to the orange level, that one's there. And here in our all level, it shows up as well. So if we wanted to have a level that just had the most important things on it, we could have that one up with us. And then background things that we just like, like the Streaming Idiots logo right here, um, like that right there, 
we could put that on another level because we only use it at the beginning of the show and at the end of the show. And so it's easy to go to that, that level. Um, the, uh, the vMix is, is, seems to be some really cool software. Like I say, I'm still getting to, I'm still learning how to use it. And vMix is, is out with a new beta, vMix 14. And some of the interesting things in the beta, which, which I wanted to bring to your attention, number one on the list, and I think this may not have gotten as much publicity as it deserves, vMix in the past uh, was similar to VidBlaster in that it didn't have its own encoder. It doesn't have its own encoder, let me put it that way. And it counted on Adobe's um, abandoned, orphaned Flash Media Live Encoder 3.2, which Adobe said several years ago they were no longer going to support and no longer going to make any changes, fix any bugs, anything like that. So vMix and VidBlaster have both been using um, Flash Media Live Encoder, sometimes referred to as FMLE. And FMLE is a little bit of a resource hog. And so it, you know, basically, it, it, and it takes a lot of horsepower to stream, especially high resolutions, high, excuse me, high bit rates. So um, I'm a, a VidBlaster moderator on the, on the VidBlaster forum and chimed in on the suggestion that VidBlaster needed to find another another encoder to use besides Flash Media Live Encoder, possibly take a look at something called FFmpeg. And about, uh, oh, a month, six weeks ago, well, probably before that, VidBlaster started some private betas um, where it began to uh, experiment with FFmpeg kind of behind the scenes. Most of VidBlaster's betas are, are in the public, which is really a lot of fun. Um, but these were private for a while and then made public. Uh, the latest VidBlaster beta is 3.26, which includes the FFmpeg uh, streaming engine kind of in the background. Um, FFmpeg is not like Flash Media Live Encoder in the sense that it uh, Flash Media Live Encoder has its own graphical uh, user interface, its own GUI. FFmpeg doesn't. FFmpeg is just a command line uh, form program. Now the people have built some GUIs for it, but, but it just depends on whatever the builder wants to do. Um, so FFmpeg typically runs invisibly behind VidBlaster and VidBlaster tells it what settings it wants to use and FFmpeg says, okay, let's go. The big, the big news with that was that FFmpeg uses, number one, the AAC audio codec, which typically you have to purchase separately with Flash Media Live Encoder. I think it's 100 bucks a user. And uh, FFmpeg also uses the X.264 implementation of H.264, which has, uh, from what I understand, a just a more robust way of encoding. Uh, gives you a better resolution at a lower bit rate and puts cheese on top of that. So, you know, if it's got cheese on it, I'm loving it. So that, that's, that was great with me. Um, now, Wirecast has, had, uh, has been using X.264 for probably maybe a year, plus or minus, in Wirecast 5. Um, so VidBlaster was, you know, kind of second to the game with, with that. And I think that we'll continue to see that develop. Now, uh, vMix just in the last, I would say, week has put out a beta for um, vMix 14, which includes an option to use the FFmpeg. And to go to that, let's see if I can show you that here. There is a, um, you, you can't see my mouse, unfortunately, with this, but there's a, 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 a word on the bottom of the screen called stream and next to it is a button uh, yeah you can see it pop up down there that is to configure streaming settings so we'll pop up that window and in that window it gives a profile um, but that's not how we get to it so we're gonna go out of that we're gonna go up here to settings there we go into the performance tab and right here in the middle of that, and again, you can't see my, there we go. You can see I dropped it down. It's called streaming application. We have a choice between FMLE and FFmpeg. 
So that's where we start if we want to use our FFmpeg as our encoder. Um, now again, this is a beta, and so vMix is still very much in the beginning processes. Uh, FFmpeg has thousands of options of how it can be configured. I mean, it, it actually can be used as a standalone uh, encoder to encode video. Uh, not necessarily live video for streaming, but just to encode it and produce a video file. It can also encode live video like this and stream it, so it's, it's very versatile. Um, and as you know, things that are more powerful are typically more confusing or more difficult to learn and to use. And so I think we will see vMix and VidBlaster, for that matter, begin to gradually uh, incorporate more and more FFmpeg options in the software um, as they, they find a need for it and, um, and as people request it, I think, is, is the way it's going to work. Um, let's see. The, um, the other features that seem to be um, particularly interesting in, in vMix, uh, one that I thought was pretty neat. In, in vMix, it, certain kinds of settings, if you change certain kinds of settings, those don't go into effect until the program restarts. That is, so you have to exit the program and then come back into the program, and the, um, the, the settings will now go into effect. And so you had to know to do that. Um, it was not intuitive. I don't even think there was a, a, a message that said, you know, please restart to do this. And so they've changed that now that vMix can detect which setting changes need to have restarts and which don't. Um, and will prompt you to restart if you make a change that needs to have be restarted in order to go into effect. And so that, uh, that will be good. Now, when vMix starts, um, it, at least from what I can tell, it starts with sort of a default screen and you load a preset, um, which in VidBlaster you might call a profile. Um, and I forget what they call that in um, Wirecast. It's called a... Uh, Well, I'm not sure what it's called in Wirecast. Sorry about that, Wirecast folks. Um, I'm sure I can get get some email of folks that'll straighten me out on that one. The um, the 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 restarting of the program means that you need to restart the profile, but when it restarts itself automatically, it automatically loads the the last preset that was already loaded. So that's good. Um, it will, will not restart streaming or recording um, or any kind of external output like what we're doing right now where we're outputting the, the program and we're sending it over to Wirecast. Um, let's see, other new features. Um, in our, our first segment today, we spent a lot of time talking about deinterlacing in cameras and how my opinion continues to be that it's much more effective and efficient and probably proper protocol to, uh, to use cameras that are already set for a deinterlaced mode, that is a progressive mode. And that in cameras a lot of times that means setting it to a, a frame rate setting of PF30 um, and that will give you progressive mode. In, um, in vMix uh, there is a, a, a deinterlacing uh, dropdown that will choose dynamically one of several different types of deinterlacers and pick the best one for you if you have to deinterlace a camera. Now there are times, you know, when in the in the real world, you know, where we all live. Let me let me switch back to me here for just a second. I'll show you the other screen in, in just a second. The, uh, there, there are times in the real world when you're streaming when you, you know, you've borrowed a camera or somebody's using a camera there and you're taking their feed or some other reason that you either don't have time or aren't allowed to make modifications to the camera, that is to, to change it from deinterlacing to, to progressive, that you need to deinterlace in order for it to not look crummy. Um, in our Previous, previous segment, we showed some pictures of you know, what, a de what an interlaced feed looks like when you're streaming it, um, and it doesn't look good. So 
the the ability to have the deinterlacing option is is always good and and always effective um, let's see the uh, there are some other minor changes um, to the to vmix in version 14 but the big deal seems to be the the uh, the addition of the FFmpeg, and I think it's uh, it's probably a complement to VidBlaster and to VidBlaster's uh, developer Mike Versteeg that uh, VMix and Martin Sinclair, um, you know, saw that as a as a good option and said, you know, we're going to adopt that option too, and so it'll be interesting to see how each one of the two developers. Are able to uh, to take that concept of FFmpeg and explore what FFmpeg does and how it does in order to you know again we're looking for that sweet spot where we're we're not asking the PC to use a lot of horsepower to do compression but at the same time we'd like to send up a uh, a stream that's not using all sorts of bandwidth in order to look really good at HD. So if we can stream a, a 720 stream, um, and you know today we're streaming it at about 2500, the video part of it, 2500 K BPS. Um, if we could stream this 720 stream with a little higher compression without killing our CPU and stream it at 1500 K BPS, um, it would mean that we could stream it uh, from a location that didn't have as fast an internet for one, um, and it also would mean that if we're paying for streaming, that is we're not using a free CDN, we're using a paid CDN and we're paying for bandwidth, that uh, we wouldn't be using as much bandwidth. And as I was talking with, uh, with one of our viewers uh, earlier today in the chat room, uh, 814, uh, he was, com was noting that his video was a little choppy. Well, that's because we were sending a feed that was, you know, too 2.5 to 3.0 mbps per second um, and so if we could pop that down to 1500 kbps per second for him maybe it would not have been so choppy and it would have given him a, a really spectacular image uh, as it was in our stream today we're streaming two separate streams and and uh, wirecast is doing that for us both of them are going to decast one of them is going uh, 720p at, uh, at 1500 kbps for video and I think 128 kbps for audio. And the other one is going to, uh, to decast and it's, it's a, a much slower stream, I think 300 kbps for video and maybe uh, you know, 90 kbps for 96 kbps for audio. Uh, that's a very low resolution. I think, you know, maybe 144 by 120 or something like that. And that's intended for folks that are watching us on their, their iPads and on their phones and are um, using, you know, their, their, um, their, their wireless connection, you know, w would be, you know, the Verizon or AT&T or T-Mobile or whoever it was, uh, and using, basically using their data in order to, to watch the stream. So we want to be respectful of them by, by giving them the option to watch it at a lower resolution uh, and not eat up so much bandwidth. Um, and Wirecast allows us to do that without, uh, without killing the CPU bank. Uh, that's the whole idea is to be able to do so much without killing the CPU because the CPU seems to be um, CPU first for me and, and, and uh, bandwidth second. CPU seems to be the primary uh, limiter in what we can do. You know, how much can you do? How many cameras can you add? Um, you know, how, how great a resolution can you stream? Um, and how many other fancy things can you do that, that require a lot, of, a lot of CPU usage? Now, one, one issue, or excuse me, one distinguishing difference between VidBlaster on the, the, the one hand and Wirecast and vMix on the other hand is that vMix and Wirecast have been able to use some of the, the latent power in the GPU, that is in your video card, 
um, to do some processing and to offload some of that processing from the CPU. So um, I'm looking over here right now and we're streaming uh, 720p, 30 frames a second, um, bit rate that fluctuates between 2600 and 3100, and our total CPU usage is between 30 and 35 percent. Uh, that's good. That gives us a lot of headroom to be able to do other kinds of things. If we want to play videos, if we want to do chroma key, if we want to, if we want to bring in a Skype call, or Skype is a, I mean, you talk about a pig, Skype is a pig. Skype will use as much bandwidth as you let it, and will use a lot of CPU too. Um, so it will continue to see as I become more familiar with these programs. In fact, I can't wait to take a Skype caller and, and bring him into uh, vMix or, or Wirecast. Um, one of, if, if you are out there and you are a vMix aficionado, I would love to hear from you because I have some questions about the audio portion of vMix. Currently today we're using vMix purely for video and we're picking up the audio in Wirecast from our mixer directly. And so we're taking any audio that comes from vMix and we're sending it to the mixer and then of course my mic which is going to the mixer and then the mixer is sending that feed to uh, to Wirecast, which streams it. Um, haven't been able to get that figured out quite the way I'd like to in, in vMix at this point. It uh, I'm picking up some echoing, so obviously I'm doing something twice that I don't need to do. Um, let's see. The um, Let me check chat here and make sure I haven't missed anything. Uh, check, check, check. All right, Martin K says he would be interested to see if this week's 720p stream is being uh, would be interested to see this week's 720p stream being sent at 1500 bps since I don't think there's enough detail in the main PTC shot to justify 2500 bps. Um, yeah, that could be. That could be. And you know, Martin, that that's a that's a great point. So much of what we're doing on, on these shows, Streaming Idiots and That Bid Blaster Guy, um, some of it is sharing really knowledge. You know, these are things that are tried and true, and I've tested them, and I can tell you this is the way it is. And some of it is experimentation. Uh, you know, if you've been thinking about, golly, what would it happen if I did this, this, and this? Well, sometimes you can't always do that. Sometimes it means you have to buy a new capture card, or you have to be in a particular venue that you're not in. And that's why we're trying to experiment with as many different kinds of things as we can here to show you, um, you know, what, what an idiot can do. You know, if an idiot can do it, then you can do it. That's, that's the premise of the show, that streaming, you know, can be really pretty easy. Now, yes, it can be complicated, and it can be sometimes really difficult to troubleshoot once you've made it really, really complicated. That's why I really love... Uh, the, the one, you know, my, my vid blaster guy mantra, one guy, one PC, one awesome broadcast. I really do think that, uh, you know, with the right combination of, of hardware and software that you can do all of this stuff on one PC. Um, looking in front of me right now, I don't have the shot up. Well, let me tell you what. Let me put that shot up. And so let me cut over to this shot for just a sec. And I'm going to add an input. And that input is going to be a camera, and that camera is going to be a Logitech C920, and it, we're going to use no audio from it, and we're going to say OK. And so that's going to be this shot, and we'll just do kind of a quick cut right here. This is the studio, um, and as you can see, it's a it's a disaster, it's a mess. We got cameras all over the place, and microphones all over the place, and sound panels. Um, trying to make things go, but the main idea is that we got we've got three different monitors. Here in the center is the production software. Right now it was vMix. Earlier today when we did that VidBlaster guy as our show, it was VidBlaster. Over here to the right, on the right hand monitor, uh, in the top section right there is Wirecast. Wirecast is streaming and recording. Right below that is Windows Task Manager. I want to see what the CPU usage is among the different cores. 
and also keep an eye on the RAM usage. Over here on the left-hand monitor, we've got two Chrome windows up. The window on the left is information about whatever we're talking about. The window on the right is the chat room. Now in VidBlaster, um, we have uh, a great method of capturing, of uh, doing a screen capture, where basically we just you know pull up a camera module, tell it it's capturing, and then go out and paint the screen, drag and drop from right to left and from top to bottom the, the outline and can bring that right up. That's not quite as easy to do in, in, uh, in vMix. You basically have to get your coordinates and, and kind of play with it in order to, to get your X and Y coordinates correct. It is a little bit more precise because it does do X and Y, but it's not nearly as quick. Um, now, where would a quickness come in? Well, quickness would come in and, uh, and let's, let's just cut back to, yeah, we'll just go back to me here. There we go. Uh, quickness comes in when, let's say, um, my good friend Amnon Nissan, who does that uh, awesome Sunday morning tech show called Computers 2K Now, Computers2KNow.com. And he'll have anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 to, you know, 10,000 people watching on a Sunday. They go 9 to noon Eastern time. And it's a bunch of old gray-haired guys talking tech. And But don't let the, the gray hair fool you. Uh, the gray hair in this case really means wisdom because these are guys that have been in tech since tech since before tech was cool. <laughs> and, and they really know their stuff. And they are uh, generally Amnon will host it and he'll have three other co-hosts on there and the co-hosts will come in on Skype. Well, if you've ever used Skype for multiple um, callers, you know that each time a Skype caller appears or disappears, it reorganizes the Skype window as to where the video images appear. Um, so if you have two callers, they're side by side. If you have three callers, it drops those down and puts another one in the middle. If you have four callers, now it's you know two and two in a square. And so as people come and go, it kind of reconfigures that. VidBlaster is is perfect for that because you can recapture those screens probably within a matter of you know 15, 20 seconds, plus or minus. Um, in in vMix, from what I can tell, it can be done, but it, it will take some, some more time to do it. What, uh, what I haven't experimented with yet and I'm, I'm interested in playing with is if you can set up a series of uh, captures that, um, you know, one, capture, one series of captures would be built based on, on two inputs, one series of captures would be built based on three inputs, because inputs pretty well, whenever you have a three input uh, Skype call, uh, the inputs are in the same place. So, uh, you know, the, the fact that vMix is so light on CPU, you may be able to, uh, you know, use the, the, the purple level down here. Um, the purple level down, down. Uh, let's see, where is it? Oh, it's it's right below. It. How do I point to it? It's right below me. Ah, and there we go. Right below me over there. You can see the red, green, yellow, and purples. And uh, so you might put your your Skype captures for three on the purple level and Skype captures for two on the the yellow level, and only you know go to them when you need to. Um, so that's a long way of saying that I've got some more work to do with this software, um, but at the same time, am enjoying it immensely, and you know it's it's really fun. It's 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 not like at least in my case, it's not like I have to choose. Um, you know, I've, some of you are, are probably more fortunate than me. I only own one car, um, but the but I have a friend who owns three cars and he's got a car that he drives to work and then he got a, he has a car that he takes on long trips and then he has a car that he drives on Sundays and each one of the cars he he loves for the purpose that that car serves and so it's it's really been fun to get to know vMix and get to know Wirecast and to see how they're going to fit a specific set of needs 
um, and to, of course, have known and loved Bid Blaster for years and know the, the specific set of needs that it fits. Uh, it, it would be nice if um, we could take uh, all three of these softwares and, and put them in together and take the strengths of all of them, but uh, I don't think that will happen. It, it'll be interesting, though, because you know, in the early days of automobiles, there were lots of different ways of doing the same thing, and then things kind of became standardized. And if you look at cars today, they, they pretty well all look the same. Um, and now you've got three distinct pieces of software, Wirecast, BitBlaster, and, and vMix. And there's some other players, too, but those, I think, are sort of the big three. Um, and they do things very differently. They come from different ways of thinking. And as they are maturing and as they're adding features, they're becoming more and more alike in that the features that they're adding, uh, you know, I think Wirecast will be soon coming out with uh, slow motion instant replay. Wow, that's going to be great. Bidblaster's had it for about a year. Uh, VMix has a delayed motion replay uh, that I think, you know, is, is under is is under uh, continued improvement. Maybe that's the best way to put it. Um, so it's it's going to be interesting to see as time goes on how these programs you know kind of begin to to survey each other and see what the, they think the strong features in the other programs are to add for themselves. Uh, I will say that it has been tremendous amount of fun to be associated with uh, with VidBlaster from early on because VidBlaster really has been the trailblazer with lots of features. Um, now, I, you know, hat tip to Wirecast because I think they were sort of first on the scene and have got a, a very stable project, uh, a product that has a huge following across the world um, and is the only one of the three that is available on uh, Mac as well as PCs. Um, so hat, hat tip to Wirecast for that one, but VidBlaster has been very much of an innovator um, and, you know, the first one to get slow motion instant replay, the first one to, to use FFmpeg. Um, I'm sure there are a lot of other firsts there that, that don't even come to mind. And even little things like the ability to do a, a very, very quick screen capture. Um, you know, those are, are strengths of that software that uh, nobody else has been able to touch. At some point, perhaps, it, it may be a lot of fun to have sort of a shootout uh, and pick, uh, you know, five or ten functions. You know, some of them may be sort of basic functions and some of them ancillary functions and uh, kind of run the softwares head-to-head uh, -head on each one and see how they do. That, that would be a ton of fun. I don't have time for that, uh, that shootout quite yet and, and probably not fair that I, I get involved in it until I have a lot more knowledge of the programs. But I bet there's some Wirecast and vMix folks out there that might be willing to... Uh, to help put something like that together. If, you, if you'd be interested in that, shoot me a line. It's tom at streamingidiots.com. Tom at streamingidiots.com. Um, and just a, a last mention before we close, let me check the chat room, see if I missed anything. Uh, no, they're just talking bad about me. That's okay. Uh, not really. I am an authorized uh, reseller for vMix and for VidBlaster. And if you buy it from me, uh, you get my cell phone number which means you get to call me. Now, don't call me during the show because I won't answer, but you can leave a message, and I promise I'll call you back. And, uh, you know, what was it? I was on the phone last night at 9 o'clock with a customer who had a problem, and it just, you know, it, it turns out it wasn't even a, 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 a bid blaster problem. It was a PC problem. But that's okay. I'm, I'm happy to help uh, troubleshoot, and that's one of my specialties is troubleshooting. Troubleshooting and building uh, really super fast PCs. That's, that's, that's the joy. Um, Golly gee, let's see, what do we need to do here? Um, I guess we need to say that uh, we've reached the, the end of our time and that I uh, look forward to uh, coming back with you uh, next week at this same time uh, when we can do another, another episode of Streaming Idiots. Um, Tom Sinclair, and uh, thanks for watching. Oh, catch us on YouTube. Yeah, do that. Later. Bye now. Boy, well, that was fun. Can't wait to do that again. Whoops, we're still live, Mike.